You are now rocking with the best DJ Immortal in the mix live. Stay tuned. Outlaw Radio. All right, Outlaw Radio Live fans, we are live on the air with South Central's Absolute Legend. You already know it's Havoc, now known as Game Changer. How you doing tonight? Man, I'm doing great. South Central Cartel, baby. <laughs> you already know, man. South Central Cartel is taking over the Outlaw Radio Live airwaves, man. You know, what's it like out in South Central tonight? What's the weather like? Oh, man, it's kind of um, nice and beautiful, man. You know, I stay right out on the outskirts of um, South Central now. I actually stay out in the Antelope Valley area right now. But, um, yeah, man, the weather's beautiful, man, out here right now. You know, around about, you know, low 70s today, beautiful skies, clear, fresh air. Yeah, hey, that's and, some beach weather. You know, beautiful, beautiful. Man, that's some beach weather, man. I'm, I'm, I'm jealous of hearing that, man. That's some beach weather. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, man. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. You come and check us out. <laughs> oh, man, trust me. I'm planning it, man. I'm saving up for that, man. I got to get out to California, man. But I have to ask you, man, what made you decide to get into the music industry? Wow, man. Uh, first of all, man, you know, I was born a celebrity kid. I was born in Chicago, Illinois, to a remarkable dad who happens to be in the Music Hall of Fame. My dad's group got five number one hits. Uh, they've been around the world, you know, and the group is called The Shylights. Have you seen an old girl write a letter, coldest days of my life? Beyonce's biggest song is my dad's and them crazy in love is a Shylight remake. Uh, you know, we got music in um, 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 Finding Dory. Uh, we got music in the uh, New Bay Watch, uh, also in Chirac, the movie is about Chicago. You know, uh, they just got inducted to the Music Hall of Fame, and they're also um, working on getting them uh, inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So basically, it comes from my dad, man. <laughs> I have to ask, man, what was it like growing up with a legendary father? Man, it was amazing, man, you know, to be able to travel around the world with my pops, man, going to the studios when I was young, hanging out with Pop Staple and the Staple Singers, the Jackson Five, standing over their house, you know, playing with Michael, Randy, and Janet, and Catherine cooking dinner for me and my sister. I hung out with the emotions. Uh, I had a fabulous life, man. Went to Catholic school, private school, used to be a altar boy and this man has had a great life man and i'm just very thankful to my father for that man you know living in mansions made buzzers you know but before all that came man my dad you know he paid the dues man like you know we didn't always have nothing you know we was you know you know struggling and then all of a sudden we went from an apartment to a mansion <laughs> I mean, it takes one record, one successful record to drop, and then boom. You know what I mean? Your life changes in a snap of a finger. Man, I didn't know. All I know is my dad and the music sounded good to me. <laughs> <laughs> so I have to ask you this, man. I read an article on, on the internet not too long ago that Ice T, Too Short, Yo Yo, and Corrupt support Havoc the Mouthpieces, proclaim to go hard. It's, it's, glamed, it, it's game changer time. How does it feel knowing that these West Coast legends are supporting your work and what you do? Oh, wow, man. You know, the only thing I can say for that is um, hard work, recognize hard work. Uh, you know, during the early um, 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 days of uh, grinding, during the, you know, uh, from 87 to about 2000, I probably was the hardest working man in show business. I was everywhere. I knew everybody. I made stuff happen, and I put the SEC on my back, man, and, um, you know, tried to help them get to greatness, man. Man, most definitely, man. You were the one that actually, like, booked a lot of their shows as well, and you really put a SEC on the map, man. Well, you know, I financed, you know, the money. Uh, you know, uh, when I first met Prodigy, um, you know, through, um, uh, through his mother. I met Prodigy through his mother because, you know, I used to date Prodigy sister for 17 years. Me and her was in a relationship. So that's how I first met um, Prod, and um, one day I was at um, his sister's house, and he walked in the house, and he had a briefcase. Um, and I was, like, curious, you know, what's in the briefcase? He's like, man, he's rhyme, he's rap. I'm like, rhyme, he's rap? He was like, no rapper, like, you know what I mean? So he pulled out some raps, man, the boy was fire! Man, the man, man, Prod was amazing, man. And I was like, wow, man, you know, my pops in the shot lights, man. You need to put me on, man, so we can make it. And so he gave me 
a shot, man. And, um, you know, from that point on, man, I earned my, I earned my keep. You know what I'm saying? I went to bat, and I, and I, um, you know, I did what I had to do, man. And I'm very proud and grateful, you know, for you know, pride giving me opportunity. But once I got it, I, I, you know, I took it from, you know, from there. And man, you and Prodigy made some amazing, amazing records, man, together. You know, the legendary Havoc and Prodigy, man, legend, yeah, legendary man, I was rap duo. To your, yeah, I was listening to your interview uh, with Prodigy, and you was asking him about that, and he actually said I wasn't, and I was kind of shocked at that. You know what I mean? Like, you know, you was like, yeah, you know, it's, um, the, the Havoc, the H A B O C, is that the duo Havoc? And he was like, no. And you was like, and you kind of froze a little bit. And then he just kept saying, you know, rhyme sign the rapper, rhyme sign the rapper, rhyme sign the rapper, you know, like trying to, you know, make it very clear, you know, that rhyme sign was the rapper, you know. But you also could have made it very clear that having put up all that money so rhyme sign can rap. That's true. So, you know, I um, I was just, you know, you know, just a little bit like, you know what I'm saying? I mean, if you go look, me and Prodigy did three albums together. You know, um, uh, um, living in a crime way, kicking game, and truths never stop. That's Havoc and Prodigy. H-A-V-O-C, not H-A-V-I-K-K. And you know what? I have to ask one thing before we get off the Havoc and Prodigy uh, thing. Because as, as everybody knows, Mob Deep is also Havoc and Prodigy as well. Was there any confusion back in the day as well when you guys were like, doing your thing? Well, it actually started, they um, actually sent the letter to... Um, um, uh, 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 GWK's attorney Reggie Brown talking about we stole the name, we need to stop using it, and blah, 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 blah. but uh, you know, um, fortunately, we had already had a Have a True Prodigy record out, uh, living in a crime way. So we basically sent them, you know, uh, a, a letter in return and made them change their name from Have Pink and Prodigy to Mob D. Yeah, I'm gonna be honest with you though, man. Like. When you, I'm not, I'm, you know, I know one of them passed away, so I'm not going to say anything bad. You know, God bless his soul. But I don't know. I'm not really a big fan of the whole Mob Deep, the, the, like that Havoc and Prodigy. You know what I mean? I've always been the South Central kind of guy, man. You guys right. have the rhymes. You guys have the flow. You guys have, you guys are the dynamic duo. Those guys, in my mind, you know, they're not Havoc and Prodigy. They're just Mob Deep. You know what I mean? Right, you guys they... are the real Havoc and Prodigy. Right, and you know what, and I respect that from you, but I also respect the fact that them young men were talented as well. What, 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 what they couldn't grasp was the fact that it, it was just a coincidence. That's you know what true. I mean? And so, uh, you know, um, 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 Prodigy got on interviews and was talking big shit. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, we had a few little run-ins with them in Atlanta at Jack the Rapper. You know what I'm saying? You know, uh, the two little guys tried to run up on me, and I, you know, I dropped my luggage. I was getting ready to sock these little niggas up. But Guru, rest in peace, Gangstar came and, and you know, and kind of, you know, um, you know, hollered at them, told them kind of like, you let it go. And then Prodigy and um, Havoc, H-A-V-I-K-K, also had a, a run-in with them. So we had two different run-ins with them, but they actually, you know, be on interviews talking about they shook us. It ain't a group, a rapper, or a nigga in the game gonna ever, ever shake SCC. If anything, we're gonna shook your motherfucking ass. You my friend. But yeah, we was the G's in this shit. So what we look like getting shook by some little bitty ass niggas that, you know what I'm saying, like, uh, they were like five, one, five, two when they ran up on me. Uh, it, 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 you know what I mean? But I get it though. You know what I mean? They was young, they was ambitious. And, you know, they little heads with, you know, they little egos with, uh, you know, with, they were feeling their egos. But they are about to fill these knuckles, too. So I have to ask you, man, when uh, your nickname's Havoc the Mouthpiece, I have to ask, like, how did you get the name the Mouthpiece? Well, I got the Mouthpiece because I know how to talk. But Prodigy actually gave, uh, came up with the name Havoc. And he basically mentioned it to me and mentioned it to Rhyme Son. And so when he did that, we both said we wanted to use the name. So Rhyme Sound figured because he was, you know, lead rapper that, you know, he should have the name. And me, I'm an egotistic type of brother. Just because you, you know, you rap don't mean that you deserve a name more than me. So our egos got involved about the name. I wasn't going to change it. He wasn't going to change it. So in the back of my mind, I'm going to make my habit more popular than your habit. And that's what 
what it, what it really boiled down to from the inner part of the group. You know what I mean? And and you know you know because there was a there was a lot about that name Havoc. You know early on. So oh, basically, yeah, Prodigy well, gave right. us the name Havoc, and we both wouldn't give it up. So I have to ask you. I have to ask you this, man. Like, so I, I've, I've, as we all know, you know what I mean. Uh, you are a member of South Central Cartel, but half fast. How did you get connected well, with the rest of the group? You know, like how did you all get together? Well, that's all Prodigy, man. Prodigy then was his cousin Rhyme Sign. LB was from where he grew up. You know, in in the neighborhood over there with his brother. Uh, uh, Chaos. You know, him and Chaos basically started when I first met him. It was him, Chaos. And um and Rhyme Sound, it was three of them. And then later on, Grip Grip came along down the road. You know what I'm saying? So uh, basically, you know, when I met Pry, Pry was in the group with Chaos and and Rhyme Sound. And um and when I got with them, um that's when I met with them. They was together, and then we all formed the group, four of us. It was called Mafia Style, and it was me, Prodigy. Um, but our name wasn't Happy and Prodigy then. I was MC No, Prodigy was MC Def, Rhyme Sign Havoc was MC Hell, and DJ Chaos was always DJ Chaos. Oh, I did not even and know that. I thought you guys started, always had the same names almost. No, nah, we started in 87 as Mafia Style. Then we did another record uh, with Prodigy. Well, Prodigy actually did another record with Kahafa as when he became Prodigy. But before Prodigy, uh, that record came, we did another record called um, Rap World, right, where we was Chaos and Mayhem featuring Havoc. And our first single came out was called Smooth Criminal on K-Day. That was our first record we ever got played on the radio was, was Chaos and Mayhem. And the album was called Rap World. And so that was just me and Prodigy and Chaos, just us. And then eventually, you know, everybody quit, you know, left the game. And it was just me and Prod. And that's how Havoc and Prodigy became the duo of Havoc and Prodigy. And LV was always doing his thing regardless. Rather, you know, transition of what we was going through, LV stayed on the grass, singing, church, you know, at Southwest College. So LV always had to grind. But basically, you know, me and Prod, you know, carried on everything until it got to the point to where we start getting a lot of, you know, we start making good music, you know what I'm saying? And um, and so Pry came to me, you know what I mean, and just asked me, man, let's bring the SDC back. And, um, you know, you know, and, you know, because I have so much respect for Pry, I, I agreed to it, even though I felt like, you know, um, um, you know, why should we go bring back people who all abandoned us, left the group, and, you know, and I guess they felt like, you know, we wasn't going to never make it. That's so, true. you know, that was all pride, man, you know, as far as, you know, um, the group members, as um, far as, you know, the sound of the group, you know what I mean, the direction, um, you know, what our music was like, you know, it started off with Chris Jamarama, right, and then Prodigy learned a lot from Chris Jamarama, and then that eventually led to, you know, man, Prodigy, you know, um, you know, pitching in and getting his first equipment, and then he started producing that's crazy, man. When you also when you brought up uh, K Day earlier, man, K Day really gave a lot of people their starts, man. Really played a lot of their first records on the air, like for instance NWA, uh, like you said, South Central Cartel. And when I brought well, it up, was Havoc, it, it was the South Central Cartel. We were uh, Chaos and Mayhem featuring Havoc. You know what I'm saying? MC Note. Well, I was called MC Note at that time because I remember the beginning of the song. I was going, "Wait a minute, we're smooth criminals, not seen, not caught." Fresh from L.A., death, take it away. Criminals rolling, money falling, that's pride rapping, and, and you know what I mean? And uh, Greg Mack broke it. Greg Mack. Infamous Greg Mack, man, for the best from yeah, the West, Greg you know Mack, what I mean? Greg Mack, the cat. You best get ready uh, when Craig Mack, you know what I mean? You best get ready when Craig Mack spins your shit, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, no, it's Greg Mack. Craig Mack is flavor in your ear. Greg Mack. Oh man, he uh, that guy gave us so many legendary individuals their starts, man, just by playing their music yeah, and getting them Yeah, eleven. Mhm. K Day, AM. It was on AM back then. It's crazy that K Day's still going on, man. We used to be able to listen to that on the internet, um, all over, but unfortunately, 
You know, I guess they uh, changed ownership, so now you can only listen it's to it 90, in the LAL. It's 92.3 FM now. 90-something um, FM now. Yeah, they got K-Day now. It's big. Yeah, well, I, I used to listen to it all the time down here on the internet, but they ended up, I guess they changed ownership, so now you actually can't listen to it in other countries, unfortunately. Wow. No, it is yeah, what it man, is. I enjoyed it, it while I could. Man. You the days, man. Oh, yeah, man. So I also saw, when I mentioned NWA earlier, I saw a picture of you with Easy e of NWA. I have to ask, <laughs> how did you get connected with Easy e and what was he like as a person? Man, first of all, Easy e was an amazing brother. Um, I met um, Easy e uh, a couple of times. Um, the first time I actually met Easy was at a convention up north in Frisco. Uh, it was some um, convention they give. I can't remember the name. I'm Gavin, something up there, and that's when I first met him. Then I actually got a chance to kick it and talk with him at 92.3 to beat one day. We was out in the parking lot. And, um, uh, you know, he chopped it up. He was telling me, you know, have you remind me of, of me, you know what I'm saying? He was telling me, man, don't waste a lot of money on videos. Make sure you keep your videos authentic. Like, just giving me, like, game, like, you know, as a young up-and-coming CEO. And um, he um, actually um, just, you know, sat there and talked to me. And then I was actually on at the Ruthless Radio Show when Eve e and um, uh, Dog Pound and all them was on the air arguing with Dominique the Prima and Easy on the Ruthless show. And, you know, they got it on um, on YouTube where you can go pull it up and you can hear me and Easy and everybody going back and forth, back and forth, you know. And, you know, Easy just was a great guy, a businessman, you know. Rest in peace. And also Jerry Heller was a, you know, was, was a good businessman. You know, and, and what I, one thing I don't like is the media really portrayed Easy as such a terrible person, man. But see, Easy E is one of my rap idols, man. Like I grew up loving Easy, man. I remember uh, walking around with my Walkman, listening to Easy Does It, his record, man. Um, you know what I mean? So that's why I love asking questions like that because then it sh actually shows people, the people that knew him behind the cameras, to be like, look, he's not a bad person, and you can tell he wasn't. You can he's just not. tell that he's, he wasn't. You can tell he wasn't. It's just that. There's a lot of a lot of I don't know I don't want to say jealousy, envy, or 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 that they couldn't do what Easy done. And a lot of people, man, you know, um, they always try to pick or find things to put you down, you know, for what you do because they didn't do it, you know. So they call Easy a bad man. Why they don't call Barry Gordy a bad man? Why they don't call um, uh, 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 Barry Wise, Monica Lynch? What about, um, you know, Clyde Davis? What about Cheryl Dickinson? What about, you know what I mean? All these um, um, record company executives who um, are in the business of signing artists and helping them, be, you know, bring their dream to the front. And without money, um, without, um, without um, having, uh, you know, marketing, retail, you know, posters, it's so much money that goes involved to break a record. You know what I mean? And so a lot of people think that the record is the reason why it's successful. Oh, yeah, it has a strong point to the success, but we all know, man, I didn't heard a record that ain't good blow up better than records that are dope. That's true, man. Because of the marketing, the, you know, and, and stuff that goes on, you know. So, you know, far as I'm, you know, as far as how I look at Easy, he was a brilliant CEO, and I learned a lot from him. Man, he made one one of the most infamous and one of the most famous record labels ever, man. Ruthless Records, man. Ruthless, yes. Yes. It's going for always be in history. It's, it's embedded. And, and that's what my dream was, was for GWK. I had some same admirations. And, um, you know, you know, you know, coming up, watching my dad and them be successful, you know what I mean? And then getting, you know, getting in family you know, getting the opportunity that Prodigy gave me, you know, that, you know, I was, you know, when I got in it, I wanted to help Prodigy. The rest of them, that wasn't what I was trying to do. But I, I, I respected Prodigy so much, I went along with it. But but if I had a choice to go back and redo it, you know, when Prodigy could come to me and ask me to help somebody else, I wouldn't have done it. I just would have stuck with him. 
I wouldn't have done I wouldn't have done the rest. Only other person in the clique that I would have felt love from is Young Prod, Cali Pitts. And so speaking yeah. speaking of Cali Pitts, man, your video for your uh, doc, docufilm soundtrack you did with Young Blue, NME, and Cali Pitts. What was it like doing yeah. that project, and how did you all like, get how did you all get connected? Well, I've been knowing Frank Nitty, man, since the early 90s when he used to be out here in Lancaster Palmdale. And, um, you know, he was kind of like, you know, a little rapper. And then eventually, you know, um, Full Circle, he started developing a young um, Latin rapper by the name of Young Blue. You know what I'm saying? He is, um, you know, he's up and coming. And so, you know, um, Enemy, which um, um, Prodigy was talking about on the interview, also, remember when Pride was talking about Enemy, one of the dopest L.A. rappers out here? Yeah, so, yeah. you know, Enemy came in and blessed us and Cali, and, you know, that man, I love that song, man. The video is amazing, and I'm just hoping, you know, that the docu-film, the first of its kind docu-film, once I finish everything, that it's going to, um, you know, you know, put out a lot of West Coast knowledge and give the West Coast a lot of um, 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 respect and props that a lot of the music of hip hop wasn't giving us, you know what I mean? The, you know, like we, we we got a single few, you know, Ice Cube, N.W.A., you know what I mean? Um, 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 uh, uh, Warren G. You know what I mean? You had a few, you know, Too Short. So you know, but it, we, we we wasn't really getting what we deserved. You know, if you look at the record sales, if you put all of the West Coast record sales from a nineteen, let's say nineteen, uh, nineteen eighty seven. Right to like 2000, and then you go to the East Coast, the South, and the East, and you can combine all of their sales, and it still did not sell sell the West Coast. That's true. The West, like the West Coast, I, to me personally, I live on the East Coast, man. I live on the East Coast of Canada. I'm a 15 minute drive from the New York State border. Like I'm straight up, I can look out my kitchen window and see New York, but I still have mad wow. love for the West, man. I, I you know. Like, I can't see cars or anything, but I can see the lights. I can see the buildings. Like, I can see the dream. I can see the American dream right there. Um, but all jokes aside, man, what I'm getting at here with that is the fact that I'm I'm a huge West Coast fan. Like, I love some East Coast rap, but West Coast music always has my heart. Even though I'm living on I'm living on the East, but my heart, I'm in the West. Man, I used to love to go out to the East Coast, man, when we signed the Def Jam. I used to hang out with Russell Simmons every day. You know what I'm saying? Walk in the Def Jam, say hi to Nicky D, you know, be on the phone when they was recording Slick Rick when he was locked up. I was sitting in the conference room when he was recording his album over a phone. You know what I mean? I used to hang out all through New York, man. Just, you know, I used to have a ball hanging out. Met PM Don, you know, uh, 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 Method Man, Red Man, and just, you know, a whole bunch of the Def Jam artists. And just, you know, it was love, man. And I used to be out there for like a month at a time. A month at a time. And they showed me love. I always got love when I went to New York. So I got a lot of love and respect for New York and what they, you know, bring to the table. But also, you know what I'm saying, I'm still a West Coast guy. Man, most definitely, man. Like I said, like, I, like I'm like i living the East Coast, but West Coast rap always, always has my heart, man. But when we're on the topic of Def Jam... Hopcast, how did that record deal come to be, man? And, like, who all did you guys do songs with? Did you get to work with LL Cool J or Run DMC, anybody no, like that? No, well, on it, actually, our first album, right, I put together, uh, Prod produced it, I put together a um, a song um, called The Gangster Team, and it was featuring Tupac, my boy, Ice-T, Spice One, my best friend, and MC8 and SCC. Uh, we did a song called The Gangster Team. And to me, that probably was one of the greatest um, accomplishments, you know, of, of, you know, I can say, man, that I felt so proud, man, to have a big hand in putting that song together, along with the Murder Squad album that I put together myself. Man, I have that to ask you, what was Tupac like in the studio? Like, what was he like in the studio? Man, Pac was, was quiet. He was quiet. He was always in deep thought. Uh, when he came in the studio... Uh, 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 actually that day he had a lot on his mind that day and then when um, um, Ice-T was on the mic and so I told uh, uh, Pop I said look I'm about to go grab Spice One Eight should be pulling up in a second right he said "You, well, where's Spice at I said he had his video Trigger Gets No Heart for the Minister Society movie 
So he was like, oh, man, let me roll with you. You know where the video at? I was like, yeah, come on, let's roll. So I hopped in Pac car. We drive Spice One video. About 20 minutes later, Pac and them jumping on the Hughes brothers. You saw you saw the yeah. Hughes brothers fight? I'm the one that took Pac to the video when he beat him up. Crap, it was with man. me. I did not know that. Like, I got to ask, how did that all pop off, man? Like, what's the... Or, or, I have to ask, man, because well, I've heard, I heard many it stories. like this. All I heard was Pac telling... Them, y'all don't know nothing about street. Y'all, you nigga, know, this thug like whoop whoop whoop, and all of a sudden, I seen like four niggas chasing one of the Hughes brothers, and then while Pac and them was rat packing the other, the other Hughes brother, and me and Spice was standing behind this big giant green screen doing the chorus. Trigger got no hard, and, and then when they heard all the commotion, the camera stopped, and Spice looked at me and was like, "Man, who in the hell brought uh, Tupac here?" And I and I was like, why? He was like, man, and that's all I knew. That I didn't even know about it, it was a beat going on with um, Pac and uh and the Hughes brothers. But then the next day I go to the to the MC8 video, um, Straight Up Menace, and I see both of them there. One of them, you know, all bruised up, bandaged up, swole up, and the other one who ran and left his brother. You know, I just kind of, you know, and and. And I just went up to him, and I was like, man, why you leave your brother like that, man? I said, ain't no way on God's earth, man. I'm going to run and leave my brother. We'd have to get back to back and get our ass kicked together. And they ain't never like me since. I really didn't care. Well, that's true, though, man. Like, you know what I mean? You can't just leave your brother like that, man. Like, you know what I mean? At least stick up for your... That's your f- flesh and blood, man. Like, man, that's yeah, scandalous, man. Yeah, crazy. Man. You know what I mean? Like, that's... Yeah. And plus, Pac wasn't even that big. Wasn't he, like, five foot three, I believe, or something like yeah, that? Yeah, but he had a gang... Hey, yeah, the gang of thug like niggas with you. <laughs> well, that's true, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I, in a way, I can see why you're scared, but at least, <laughs> at least protect your brother. You know what I mean? Curl right, into a right, ball right. or it's something and just take it. Like, curl into a ball or it's something just and just respect, take it. Just the respect, man. It's true. Just the respect, man. You know, I don't care, man, because I had did a couple of interviews talking about that. Like, you know, I don't care, man. You know, ass whooping is an ass whooping, man. You gonna get over it, man. But you can't get over the fact, man, that that's going to stick with you for the rest of your life, you know. Exactly. You you know? At least you, if he would have stood there, you know, took the beating with his brother. He probably regrets it now that he looks back at it. Now that he's grown up a little bit, he's probably like, shit, man, I shouldn't have left my bro. Absolutely. I agree. But you know what, man? Stuff happens in life, man. We grow up, we mature. And, you know, when stuff just, you know, it just it happens, man. And it's all God's doing, and. You know, no matter what you think or how you see stuff, it's always going to be what God wants. And while we're on the topic of the East Coast, I also saw a picture on your Facebook of you and Treach. Uh, Tre- Treach, Tre- yes. Oh, my best friend, my East Coast best friend. Yeah, man, from Naughty by Nature. How did you and him get connected, man? Wow, another great question. I actually um, met um, Treach when um, um, at... Um, when I was in New York, and I went to a uh, uh, to the uh, Source Awards, the first annual Source Awards, when um, Pac got on stage and, and was singing, Out on Bell, California, and, you know, went crazy on the stage, threw the mic down, was mad because they didn't give Dr. Dre the album of the year when they um, gave it uh, to somebody else, and I actually met um, Tretch there, and we became friends, man, and, you know, we um uh, I'm I, actually um I'm in Tretch video the craziest West Coast niggas are the craziest and they show us actually on a you know um in the video uh, also Tretch rapped on a few songs um you know you know every time I called him he was always there at the drop of a dime bam right there and you know and and and, and his uh, auntie used to work for uh for lugs so she used to send me a lot of lugs and. Jerseys like the jerseys and the Havoc and Prodigy video, G's on the move. I got that from Trench Auntie. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome, man. And she sent us some Ewings too. Some Patrick Ewings. When Ewing had the Ewing shoe. Man, I, I love Naughty by yeah, Nature. Yeah, I used to hang out in Jersey with Trench, man. I used to be out in Jersey, man. Oh, man. That's crazy, I man. Everyone. I heard he's a wild guy, too, man. I heard he's a wild one. Man, we should have fun. Oh my God! When uh, me, him, and Pepper, uh, Spin, uh, we all be in Atlanta, man, at the club, man, hanging out. Um, New York, when he come to L.A., he hangs out. Jack the Rappers. 
Matter of fact, me, him, and Pac was in Jack the Rapper at one time hanging out, coming out the elevator together when we was hanging out, me, Pac, and Trey. And yeah? Then, that's it, actually, that's actually who introduced me to Trey before I'd seen him in, in New York was Tupac. And also Pac introduced me to Left Eye from our TLC. I have to ask Rest you this, man. While we're on t- the TLC topic, I'm going to ask this one on behalf of my wife because I know she's listening. Um, what was the left, Lisa Left Eye like as a person behind the cameras and behind the mic? Amazing. She was so sweet, man. I, I bumped into her a few times. She actually introduced me to Andre Risen. Uh, we was at a club on Sunset. Uh, matter of fact, right across the street from the old House of Blues. We was at a club, and I bumped into her again. She was like, oh, I remember you. Pac introduced you. She introduced me to her husband, Andre Rice, and she was real nice, sweet. We had a drink, me, her, and him, and chopped it up. That's when he had, she had number 80, had tattooed on her arm, and this was before she had burnt down his mansion. Oh, I heard about that. <laughs> yeah. So she was, she, she was amazing, man. She was just so talented, uh, down to earth, you know, um, I mean, just, you know, you know, approachable. She was very approachable. I do have to say, you know, you know, God bless her soul, man. That was a terrible, terrible accident. Um, yes. She should still be here, be here with us. She really should, man. Like that. She was such a, such a man, talented a lot individual. Of people, a lot of people should be still with us, but, you know, who, who is we to say what God got his purpose for? That's true, man. Like they always say, the good you know, die young, unfortunately. Come on, look at Kobe and his daughter. Yeah, that that one fucking destroyed me. Man. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to be honest yeah, with you, man. Yeah, I yeah, grew up Nipsey. loving Kobe. Nipsey, Park, Biggie, Left Eye. We can go on and on and on and on and on, all the way to the beginning of time, bruh. This ain't nothing new. God has a purpose. Look, it's been more people praying because of Kobe's death, after Kobe's death, before Kobe's death. That's true. Thank you. Think, God is amazing, man. He, you know, like, look, I don't wish nothing on nobody, but I know God, man. He, he, his, his purpose is we can't understand it, we can't grasp it, but there's a reason and a purpose for it. And when we're talking about people world. that still should be here, another one is Bushwick Bill, man. And I saw a picture on man, your that Facebook. Was my boy too, man. I saw a picture on your Facebook. I'm a huge Ghetto Boy fan, so we got to go to the south side for this one, man. What was Bushwick Bill like, man? What was he like to hang out oh with? Oh my God, we was in New York together. We went to his hometown of uh, Bushwick was born in Jamaica, but he moved to uh, to uh, uh, New York to uh, oh God, what was that city? But anyway, me, him was in Russell Simmons' limo with uh, Russell, Lem- Russell Simmons' limo driver, Kenny. And he took us over to uh, uh, Tribe Called Quest House, Q-Tip. So we in the back of the limo, man. This nigga smoked up all my weed, man. That's one thing I know about Bush, but <laughs> he smoked up all the weed, man. <laughs> but, man, he was amazing, man. Every time we hooked up, we had a ball, man. And um, I had uh, went to uh, Houston, uh doing the rap summit they did a gangster rap summit my boy david mays from the rap magazine we was at a uh, little jay's ranch the owner of rap a lot you know the ghetto boys it was mca spice one because i was actually supposed to be in the cover of that short in the in that six row with spice eight and um scarface i was supposed to have been sitting in the back but i missed my flight in the photo shoot i didn't get there until the next day after i missed my flight because i left tour to go to the interview Oh. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of stuff, man. I used to be all over the country, man. Everywhere. Every city, from Atlanta to Houston to New York, my hometown, Chicago, the Bay Area. Man, everybody in the Bay Area know me. I'm in a Jimmy Kale's first video. I'm up there with uh with Captain Saberhole and E forty, D Shot, B Legit, Spice One. I'm talking about all the Bay Area rappers, man. I used to be out there hanging with them. Uh, QD3, all us doing, some, you know, I'm in the studio hanging out with them. I got pictures of them way back, you know, when Short would look like a little, little, little teenager. And QD3 was a teenager. <laughs> so I also have to ask this, man. So uh, in the year 2000, you released your solo album called Self Made Legend, man. I have to say, one of my Correct. absolute favorites, man. How did that iconic record come to be? 
Well, really, man, uh, it had got to the point, man, um, I had um, been helping so many other rappers, man, um, you know, careers. And, um, you know, not just for them, but, you know, for the, for the sake of, you know, I was trying to find myself and know who and what my gift was. And I struggled with that a lot because I was always uh, ridiculed because I didn't know how to rap when I never rapped before. When I got with Prodigy, I just wanted to get in the group. They had already been rapping. They had already been, you know, uh, um, you know, loving rap. So when I actually, you know, tried to do my first rap, I was nervous. You know what I'm saying? Everybody staring at me, wondering how I'm going to sound, what I'm going to do. And, I, you know, I couldn't do it because I, I was nervous. And, and from that point on, it stuck with me. Like, you know, they basically, you know, was like, you know, labeled me as I couldn't rap. But in the back of my mind, shit, I can rap. Maybe I can't rap like y'all, but shoot, I can go rap to this girl. Huh, she bad. I can go rap to this record label. Huh, they gave me a deal. I can go make this money. And y'all, yeah, so that's rapping. That's true, man. You know what I mean? You got the deal. You, you know what I mean? You got the girl. You know what I mean? Damn. You know what I mean? That's rapping, man. Just like you said. Ain't no doubt about it. And I'm, you know, I'm just grateful for my gift. You know, like any interview I ever did from the, since I've been in SCC, man, the first thing I acknowledge, man, is I'm thankful for Prodigy giving me the opportunity, you know, to help him. You know what I'm saying? To help him. Because it was him who gave me that, you know, that spark to want to get in music. You know what I mean? Because of his rap. He reminded me of Eugene Record of the Shy Lights, who wrote Have You Seen an Old Girl, all these Shy Light hits, and produced. So, Prodigy reminded me of him. You know what I mean? And so, it gave me incentive to want to be in it. And and once I got in it, I didn't want to let pride down. But once I got in it, yeah, yeah, I did the damn thing. So, on your record, Self Made Legend, track four on that record, you did a song with called Till I Hit with the Late Great Badass. What was it like yeah. working with Badass, and how did you all get connected? <laughs> Man, I've been knowing Badass way back in the days, man. Um, actually, um, you know, we used to bump into each other at shows and stuff. Um, you know, just, you know, um, um, knowing of each other. And um, and so one day um, we was at the um, studio and Spice um, was coming, you know, to the studio. And um, and, um, and Badass happened to be, um, who was Badass? I had seen him somewhere. And I was like, bad, man, why don't you come get on this song with me and Spice? He's like, yeah, yeah, I, nigga, I do anything for you. You're the homie, you're the OG. And so, yeah, he came in and he blessed me, man. He, and I love his verse, man, him and Spice and Droop, man. Till I hit. We can sit the Henny on the rocks till I hit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. Rest in peace. He's a great guy, man. Badass, man. We got a lot of memories together. A lot. I got like least about 40, 50 pictures with just me and Badass, you know, at events and places and hanging out, bumping at each other. Because one thing about me, I was everywhere. I was everywhere. Everywhere. And it, and, and it didn't bother me if I had to go by myself. But most of the time, Young Pride ass was weak. <laughs> he was always eager to, to be, you know what I mean, to get us more. And so he's like my little brother. He's like, me and him, I've been knowing him since he was like nine years old. Shit, man. And you know what? I actually got the ch- privilege of interviewing uh, Callie Pitts, man. He's such I such a him, such man. an in- great individual, man. Very honest. I love him. Very straightforward man. guy. One of my one of the best, man. I'll tell you that for a fact. And the talent, talent. What about that boy, talent, man? Do you know he wrote half of Tiffany's album? Really? That's my next question. Actually, yeah, he wrote six songs on Tiffany's album. That's actually my next question, man. You are actually mentoring and managing an artist named Tiffany Lewis, man. By the way, well, I, I checked manage. out I, I checked out those songs, I'm, man. I'm I want to say I love those songs she did, man. Absolute 10 Thank out of 10. You. you know, how did you get hooked Thank up with you. Tiffany? I actually met Tiffany through her mother through social media. Her mother is a huge West Coast um fan. And she loved SCC. She actually married to uh, Tiffany's mother is married to Short Chop, the rapper. Really? Yes. And uh, so we became friends on social media. And so I seen Tiffany on her page. So I hit Tiffany up. But it was about some modeling stuff. 
and about her helping me build Game Changer. So I got in her inbox, and I was like, hey, I know you don't know me. My name is Havoc. I just got out of jail. You know, woo, woo, woo. I'm trying to, you know, you know, re, um, you know, um, define my career. And, uh, you know, um, um, I, I really don't have nothing right now, but I do have a plan. And, um, and I was just wondering, would you like, you know, would you be interested in being down? And, 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 and of course I was expecting her to say no, just based on what I said. But she said, you know what? She said, the one thing I like what you said was that you had a plan. And so that's when we started off. We was the game changers. We was, you know, I uh, was going to hook her up, you know, to be the face of uh, my clothing line and all of that. So one day I was going to the studio and I needed a singer to sing on a Chanel Royale song. And um, Tiffany Mama got in my inbox. You know Tiffany sang? I said, what? The heck? I said, for real? She was like, yeah, she can blow. She's been singing since she was like four years old. I said, no kidding. And she said, and she can sing. Like, you know, she was, you know, like, you know, giving it up for her daughter. So I called Tiffany. Why did you mean tell me you can sing? Oh, uh, you know, gave me all the time stories. <laughs> so I said, come to the studio this weekend. And she came in and she killed it. She killed it. And I knew she was a star. Oh, and man, those songs you sent her. me, man, she she killed it, bro. I listened to, like, the first, like, 30 seconds, and I was like, damn, this woman has some talent. I was like, woo, yeah. shit. Yeah, man, her album is a masterpiece, man. That beady, beady, bong, bong, that uh, crazy for the money, which is uh, Loco Por El Dinero, her Spanish side, that man up, Young Pryro, man up. Uh, which is a R&B like Keisha Cole, Mary J. Flavor, Rewind, Pure R&B. You know what I mean? The remake of Freak Like Me by Dina Howard. That's another smacker. Uh, uh, that one Night is a killer. It's like every song on her record, even the one with the Shy Lights, with my Uncle Marshall from the Shy Lights. I need to. It's like a We Out of the World too. You know, man, and honestly, I gotta I say, man, she's a really talented individual, man. I really do hope that she gets, she, she deserves to go a lot. She deserves to most definitely go all over the place. Man. Hey, man, let me t- let me just say this: out of pure, she's on her way. We just signed with Bobby D and Uncle Snoop Army. She stars tour May 9th and um, Carson at the Big Arena. We actually opened up last year at the R&B Rewind. Uh, she opened up for TLC, Bell Bib, DeVoe. Genuine, Maya, One Twelve, Next, and all of them, and she killed it. Oh, she killed man. it. So if she's listening. I do want to say congratulations on that record deal. You deserve it. You know, keep striding, keep making that great music. That's what the game needs. Is what the music industry most definitely needs. That real music. She got a lot of stuff going on. It's just people don't really know. You know what I mean? Because I just got to the point where you know. Uh, the more you 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 put stuff for people to see, the more they hate and try to uh, put the negative energy on it. So you know, there's so much stuff going on for Tiffany. I just keep it inside now. And also, man, you know, I'm also working on some films, man. Really? Yeah, I got a big feature film coming out. Uh, we're going to Atlanta soon. That's all I can say. And the name of the movie is called Ghetto Tears. And um. It's, uh, we're just waiting on the financial part to, uh, uh, you know, to uh, uh, hit that escrow account. And I have to ask you this, man. What is next for Havoc, man? Like, um, other than the movie, you got any new records coming out? Um, any two dates or anything? Man, I'm getting married. That's what's next. I'm getting married, man. Okay, hey, man, congratulations on that, man. You know what I mean? People will tell you, you marriage is a bad thing. It's not, man. I'm married no, and I'm not. loving it, bro. As long as you love her, man, and you're happy, go for it, man. Congratulations, man. I'm very happy. I met an amazing woman, and um, I love her to death. She loves me, and we have a chemistry and a bond, man, that nobody can not break. And I've been miss- missing that, you know, for a little while now in my life, man. And, you know, in order to be complete and, um, and to really achieve my greatness, you know, my, my journey to greatness, man, um, I needed someone in my life, man, you know, to, uh, you know, to love me, man. And, and this woman loves me, you know, and, and I am just, I'm just blessed, man. I, my life is at a great point right now. I'm humble. I have great family support. I have a great team with Tiffany and what we're doing with her. I have a great movie team. 
which we're getting ready for that. Uh, my sister, she's amazing. She's my president of my company. She owns one of the biggest dance companies in Milwaukee. She does all of the, you know, dancing for Tiffany, designing Tiffany's looks. And we just have a great team, man. I'm highly, you know, blessed, man. And, you know, I want to give a big, big, big love to my boy Mellow Mac, man, with helping me produce the album. Uh, my boy Hitman out of Vegas. And uh, my boy uh, Jacob G, who wrote a lot of the songs with Mello, and, and of course Young Pride, man, he wrote like six hot ones on Tiffany's album. So, I mean, that man is incredibly talented. So I do want to say one more time, man, before we move on, man, I want to say congratulations, man. I wish you and your wife you. nothing but ha lifelong happiness, man. You know, Thank you deserve you. it, bro. You deserve Kimberly. it. Kimberly Passion. She's amazing. She uh, actually lives in Hawaii. She's from, you know, she lives in Hawaii. But uh, we get married in uh, September, and then she'll be moving here with me. Hey, man, congratulations, dude. I wish you guys all the best, man. I really do, man. Thank you. So, man, I have to ask, man, this is the time in the interview, Havoc, that I give a chance for the individual that comes on the show. Just a chance to give shout-outs to whomever they want to give shout-outs to, and also their social media handles. That way our listeners can follow you if they're not already doing so. Yeah, man, I want to give, first of all, I want to give a shout-out to God, man, the Almighty, man, you know, without God and and, and my belief and, and, and the strength that he, you know, um, gives me to keep moving and moving forward when I've been wanting to give up, quit, you know what I'm saying, when so many times, man, I felt unappreciated and, you know, um, God kept giving me the strength to get up. Second of all, man, I want to give a big shout-out, man, to, you know, to my boys in SCC, man, Big Pride. Um, Cali Piss, LV, Chaos, and Grip, man. I, you know, I appreciate all of them, man. So much love and respect to them, you know. And I just want to give, you know, shout out to, you know, Tiffany Lewis and Mellow Mac, all my great team, my sister, and all my social media, man. Is you know, Kerry Calvin or Game Changer, but it's spelled a unique way: G A I M C H N G three R. Just Google Game Changer and everything I'm about will pop up. Everything. Everything I do will pop up. And, you know, like I said, man, I got a lot of stuff, man, you know, in the in the making. And I'm just, you know, I'm not going to talk about it. I'm just going to let it all, you know, um, you know, come come to, you know, you know, just come. You know, let it speak for itself. That's true, man. I want to say, man, Havoc, thank you so much for coming up on Outlaw Radio Lab, man. I've been a fan of your music. I mean... Way back in the day, bro. High school days. I used so to rock. How did I become your favorite SDC member? Tell me that, man. That's what I want to know. <laughs> See, honestly, man, I'm going to be real with you, man. When I was younger, uh, my old stepdad, he was into old, I mean, like old school rap music. So one day, you know, he was cleaning out his um, basement. And I was I was getting into rap. I was listening to Tupac, some of the West Coast stuff. And he hands me, like, a big fucking, like, box. You know those old comic book boxes? You know what I yes. mean? So it was just filled with old school CDs. It had like Run DMC, had some it had some SCC in there, some NWA, just the classics. I think I was about, I want to say 12 or 13. You know, I could be wrong on the age, but I was a youngin', bro. And um, I remember he hands me the box. He's like, yo, I don't listen to them no more. You can have them. You know, I'm like, what's it? What's in it? He's like, I don't know. A bunch of CDs. I don't fucking know. I don't care. So I took them up and it was all rap CDs. And I put it in. And I can't exactly remember what it was, but it had a white background on it. It was an old South Central Cartel record. I cannot. Right. Be... And I remember, I was, you know, you know how back in the day you read the credits, you know who was in the song? I heard your verse. Right. I heard your verses, man, with when you're Prodigy and Havoc. And I was like, yo, this Havoc's a fucking beast. I'm just like, I love it. You know what I mean? My... Yeah, because I just basically talk on the beginning of the song. But, you know, I had my own style. I consider myself like a West Coast Flavor Flav. You know, because, uh, you know, you know, the rap part, I just wanted to create in my own lane. So I became a hype business, man. <laughs> man, and you know what? The, one of my favorite songs you did with Prodigy was called The Way It's Going Down, man. I, I love that track. Yeah, it's that's fire. the way it's going down. <laughs> <laughs> man, and I, ever since then, I was hooked, man. You know, I, it's sad. I don't have those CDs anymore. You know, I was in a, a couple years back. I'm not going to get too much into it, but I was in a terrible relationship and... My ex decided to throw all this, all my CDs at a third story window. Uh, yeah, and I lived on the main street, bro. So we had cars, transports coming by, and running over them. Yeah, and I was like, oh man, I'm just like, I had a lot of feelings. Yeah, I love you know that what I mean? Video, man. 
you look at the video, man, I directed that video, and people used to say I was ahead of my time because the way I had the images inside the glasses, where you see imagery in the glasses and stuff, that was the first time that ever happened. Yeah, man, honestly, you guys, you, honestly, I look at that Sell Such a Cartel, man, it's such an underrated group, man, a lot of people, you yes. guys deserve so much more recognition than what you guys have gotten, man, it's, it's, you know, you guys deserve so hey, much man, more, man. I appreciate man. it, you know, you know, like I say, Pro, I've been always under, uh, um, underestimated from his producing skills to rapping, you know, LV, you know, he won the Grammy, man, he did a lot of things, so he kind of you know, elevated, you know, his career a little more than us because of the Grammy and the song with Coolio. But, you know, me and Prodigy did some things. You know, we was on Tales from the Hood soundtrack. You know what I mean? That, that, that you know, that was hot. I had the Young Murder Squad on the Substitute soundtrack. You know, we also had a song on the Show soundtrack. We also had a song in 8 Mile, the movie. So, you know, man, we made some impact, man. And, you know, and history can never take that from us. Oh, you man. know, and... And I'm going to make sure these interviews that I'm doing with you guys, I'm going to make damn sure that they're actually going to be around for years upon years to come. And I appreciate it, man. And get Tiffany some spins, man. Play one of those songs, man, when you hang up with me, man. You know, show me some love, man, and bump one of Tiffany's songs, man. Oh, bump I already me, man. I already got her on the list, man. I already do. I'm going to be right after this uh, right after this interview, actually. I'm going to be playing uh, Havoc and Prodigy. The way, that's the way it's going down because, like, oh! honestly... I have to, man, because that's my favorite track by you guys, and I just interviewed one of I my absolute it. favorite rappers of all time. And so of course I got to spin one, it. You got the remix one, the one to the video, or you got the original one on the album. It's two versions. The original album version. Okay, got you. Okay, that and then right after different. that, I'm gonna be playing uh, "Be Your Freak" Westlake, man. That's what I'm gonna be playing right after. Right after. Uh, be your freak. Westlake is the studio, the big studio with Michael Jackson. And everybody go to. Oh, okay. Yeah, Westlake is the studio, top notch studio. Hey man, that's that's one hell of a great studio, man. She says she's like like making her music in there. That's pretty lit. Sound good, don't it? Oh the, yeah. Is the quality good? The mix is good. Oh yeah, man, I'm loving it. I'm not gonna lie, when I heard it, because when he sent them to me earlier, I was jamming to them on the way back home uh, from K Town, and I was like, oof. I'm like, man, she she's good. I'm like, I'm like, I'm digging this. Yes, man. She West Coast needs a diva, man, and she's it. She's been appointed the next West Coast diva. Oh, I can and, uh, see it. You I, know, she's already working with TLC, like you said. You know, working with many, many great, great groups and artists. Oh, of the Shy Light? She got a song with a Shy Light. With a Shy Light. <laughs> like, not a lot of people can achieve that, man. Not a lot of people can achieve that. So, you know what? Shut up to Tiffany. You know, keep grinding. Keep doing what you're doing. Because you're, you're on, you are on the yeah. right path and on the, going down the right road. You know, don't turn. Keep yeah, going straight. Yeah, I'm just straight. trying to redefine my career. You know, like how Prodigy redefined his. Um, young, young Pride redefining his, and I'm just redefining mine and show that my talent is a talent too. And I gotta ask and, one um, thing before I get to you, before before we part ways here, man. Um, you sure. know, as we all know, I'm a huge Havoc of Prodigy fan. You know, I'm pretty sure we already comprehended that long ago. Um, do you think like ever down the road you guys might come together for like one more record, maybe an EP or something, maybe a single? Just Havoc of Prodigy one oh, more man, time. Pride? Nah, it won't happen. I'm done. Hey man, you know what? I'm done. I'm I, I, done. I, I like the honesty, man. I really do, man. You know, I, I I've seen. I'm done. I do this show, bro. As you know, when I'm not doing the show, I'm a fan. Then when I flick the mic yeah. on, I become a professional, right? But at the end of the day, I'm still a fan, man. So, you know, right. we can. I guess we, we can got dream. Three great albums together, and um, and I'm I'm appreciative for the opportunity and all of that, man. But it it, it ain't the same no more, and I'm done. Hey man, you know you're doing your own thing as well too. You know what I mean? You got your own record label. You know your um, CEO. You got Tiffany Lewis under your wing, man. So you know you're go you're going down the right path as well, man. You know what I mean? And you know what I do got to say, yeah, man. God is thank you. And we all and we all rooting for each other. So you know that you know at the end of the day, man. You know w without the music, Prodigy and Cali Pistons are my brothers. You know what I'm saying? I still I'm gonna do music with 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 Cali Pitts forever. But as far as everybody else, I'm done. And I do want to say, man, to you, man, thank you so much for everything you have done for the music industry, man. Thank you so much for the thank music, you, man. I the music you produce, that, man. Because when I was when I was a kid, man, I'm gonna be real with you. Hip hop music. The reason there's a reason why I do this show, man. A lot of people do it for clout, do it for fame. I don't do it for that, man. You know, I don't even make money off the show. I don't want to make money. I do it because I grew up in foster homes and group homes. You know what I mean? I got bullied 24/7. So when I put on my headphones. 
hip hop music and rap music was my escape from reality. So it took you away, didn't it? It did, man. I loved it so much, man. And that's I, why I do I, what I, I do, man. I spent all my money. I spent all my hard-earned money because I loved it like that. I believe in prodigy and this talent. You know what I'm saying? Then I started believing in myself. But other than that, man, um, um, you know, um, um, I'm, I'm, I, I get more respect outside of my clique than within my clique. That's true, man. Like I said, the real fans know, man. The real fans know the truth. You know, the real fans know, you know what I mean, who who did what in the, in, the, in groups like that. Yeah, man. they so, do. Real yeah, fans do. know, that's, man. I agree. I agree. And, and, and God knows the truth, and that's all that matters. <laughs> oh, man, most definitely. I want to say havoc, man. Like I said, thank you for everything man, you've done, man. it's been a man. pleasure. Because your music helped pleasure. me get through a lot of shit in my life, man. So thank you for that, you know, um... I wish you all the best. You know, congratulations on getting get, getting engaged, man. I wish you all the best, you and your future wife. Thank you. And, man, most of Thank all, you. enjoy that weekend, man. You know, it's Friday, you know. Enjoy that oh, weekend. Oh, yeah, man. Super Bowl weekend. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, 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 Super Bowl. Who are you cheering for? I got to ask who you cheering for. Who you want to win? Man, look, I'm a Bear fan, man. I'm a Bear fan. So, but honestly, man, both teams are great, man. If you go, if you're gonna go with offense, you gotta go with uh, with uh, the Chiefs. But if you're gonna go with an overall team, then I gotta go with the Niners. So I'm I'm, I'm picking the Niners, man, because that's my girl's favorite team. <laughs> hey, man, you know, happy <laughs> wife, happy <laughs> life, you know. Happy wife, happy life, man. Yeah, so I'm gonna go with her team just for her, cause she's been winning a gang of money for off of them in the last month. I, I, I'm a Saints fan, man. I really am. So obviously we're not. But, you know, I'm going to be honest, I'm a Saints fan, but if I had to choose who I'm cheering for, man, I'd say the 49ers, man, you know, go with San Francisco. That's what I'm going with, Go man. with San Francisco, man. I'm going with the Niners, man. Hey, man. So if my girl hear that, she's probably laughing and smiling, laughing. <laughs> <laughs> she's like winning. <laughs> yeah, she winning, yeah. Um, well, all right, man, I appreciate this, man. If you ever need me again or need, uh, want to interview Tiffany, man, let me know and I'll set it all up, man. Hey man, most definitely. You're always welcome on Outlaw Radio Live. Most definitely, man. I'll give, I'll shoot you. Uh, well, if you want, uh, shoot me a text after uh, after we get off the phone. You know, I'll, I'll toss on the, I'll toss on the music, and we can actually talk about uh, getting Tiffany on the show, man. All right, let's do it. I'm ready. All right, man. All right, I'll text you and we set it up. Most definitely, man. Sounds great. Thank you again, right. man. Enjoy God Super Bowl bless, weekend. Man. I'm gonna go listen to you, man, so I can hear that on the radio. I want to hear what it sounds like on the radio. <laughs> Let's get it. Thank you so much, Havoc, All man. Right, I'm sure a wonderful night, man. God bless. God bless you, too.